So here we go, guys. As promised, I'm going to work through a case study question with you uh, and show you exactly how the NCLEX test, the uh, critical judgment measurement model, using the next generation NCLEX uh, test items by Linda and Angela Silvestri. Okay, I like the book. I'll have it in the description for you because I am using uh, one of their questions. Now, the NCLEX has three types of case studies. Um, standalone, single, and unfolding case studies. This is an unfolding case study, and I will explain it to you when I tutor you. Right now, this is going to be a quick 15-minute video. I will end the video at 15 minutes, so uh, pay attention, take notes, and here we go. When you first sit down at the end clicks to answer your questions, it's a good habit to, number one, check the tabs. That's the first thing you do. So if you're taking notes, check tabs. So we can see under the flow sheet, under the decision orders, under the diagnostic test, the only tab we have is the nurse's note. Second thing you want to do, you want to uh, read the question. Okay, so read the question. Highlight the findings that are significant and require immediate follow-up. Okay, if you took the uh, prioritization uh, tutoring session, follow-up means you're looking for something that's incorrect. Wrong labs. Um, something wrong in the question, something wrong with the client, you know, all that kind of follow-up. You're not picking a right answer, you're picking wrong things, okay? So, the next thing you want to do is, this is your first question of six. What is the first step? Recognizing cues. So, as you read this question, you want to write down things that are wrong. So, here we go. Let's read the scenario. The nurse in a surgical unit at a hospital is caring for a 71-year-old 70 client who is one day post-operative following a right colonectomy for removal of a bowel tumor. The client has a nasogastric tube attached to low intermittent suctioning. The client also has an IV of 0.9% normal saline infusion at a rate of 75 milliliters an hour. The nurse performs an assessment on the client and documents the findings in the nurse's notes. Recognizing cues. What do we do? We're recognizing things that may be wrong as we read the nurse's notes. So let's do this. Uh, vital signs, temp 101, Fahrenheit, heart rate 78, uh, room uh, respiratory rate 16, oxygen 95, blood pressure 118 over 72, abdominal pain 3 out of 10 on a scale of 0 to 10. Remember what I said about pain when you took the prioritization tutoring session. Pain is not the answer. Do not pick it. Do not care about it unless we cause the pain. Okay? So at this point, we read the vital signs. Anything wrong? Write it down. Yes. The temp of 101. Go to the next system. Neurologically. Neurological. Neurological, there are alert and oriented times three, talking and asking questions about home care. Nothing wrong there, ladies and gentlemen. Integumentary, 
The skin is warm and dry, abdominal dressing changed, incision clean and dry, no drainage, sutures intact. Nothing wrong there. Next, gastrointestinal reports dry mouth and thirst, minimal nausea, bowel sounds heard all four quadrants. Last p.m. this morning, the morning of surgery, nasal gastric tube drainage, greenish yellow drainage, 20 milliliters an hour. Again, nothing wrong there. So, so far, we just wrote down the temp, right? Uh, respiratory. Lung sounds clear, denies cough and shortness of breath. Respiratory, nothing wrong. Gastrovascular, we have no cyanosis, capillary refill, three seconds, no edema or tenderness in the lower extremities, great. Denies heart, uh, denies lightheadedness and weakness. Reports discomfort of IV site six out of 10. Uh, on a 0 to 10 pain scale. IV site is red, warm, swollen, streak formation noted along the vein, palpable cord vein. All right, now we have run into a problem. And so on our piece of paper, on our board that they give us at the NCLEX, we're going to write reports discovered at the IV site. Remember, if we cause the pain, that's probably a problem. Pick it. Remember, I told you that with prioritization. So uh, uh, an IV should not be painful, right? So this is a, a pain of 6 out of 10. So write that down. Write down the site is red, swollen. See, these are all problems. Um, streak noted along uh, the vein, palpable cord like All that is a problem. Make a mental note of it. If you can't remember, write it all down. So we have cardiovascular problems here, and we have the temp that we should have wrote down, right? Because we're analyzing the cues. We're analyzing what is wrong. Gento urinary, uh, the client has ambulated to the bathroom with assistance and voided 220 milliliters, no bladder distension. Ur urinary system, nothing wrong. Okay, muscular skeletal, no weakness, ambulating with assistance, up in chair. It's okay that he's ambulating with assistance. He just got out of surgery, plus he is 71 years old. All right, so a little bit of assistance is not a bad thing. So, let's read the question again. Highlight the findings that are significant and require immediate follow-up immediate follow-up, significant and immediate are key words here. So in other words, we might not want to write everything, click everything that's wrong. We're just looking for significant and immediate follow-up, right? All right, because we're recognizing our cues. So me as a student, I would pick the temp. I would not pick the pain here because it's, it's Pain usually is not the answer unless we cause it, right? So don't pick the pain. We'll keep an eye on it, but don't pick it right now. Uh, nothing, we took notes. We already know there's nothing wrong neurologically. We already know there's nothing wrong with the skin. We already know there's nothing wrong gastrointestinally. We already know there's nothing wrong with the respiratory system, okay? But... Cardiovascular, we have a couple of problems here. Uh, IVs should not be painful, right? I taught you that in priority. So uh, pick that. Also, it's six, so that's pretty high. But like I said, we caused it. It's not a symptom of his post-op surgery. IV site is red, warm, uh, swollen, uh, with a palpable cord. Like, okay choose that because he's got a temp we already chose that he had a temp and probably the reason he has a temp is why because there's a problem here with the IV okay a temp is the body's way of saying hey there's a problem internally a temp is the first thing we see 
and then we do laughs and we take uh, the WBCs and, and so forth, okay? So, uh, we took notes and we know there's nothing wrong gastrointestinally or muscular skeletally. Muscular, muscular skeletal. So, let's see if we're right. I pick temp and the discomfort and the IV site being red. And click, oh, okay. So I got three out of three, right? Because I picked the immediate and what else did the uh, significant, significant and immediate, right? So that, this is an example of the first step in the critical judgment model, and that is recognizing your cues. Now, when you click submit on the NCLEX, uh, why can I, oh, when you click submit, it's always a good idea to check your tabs every time, okay? I don't know what's on the NCLEX. I already know that uh, these tabs are empty except the 815, the nurse reviews, the nurse's notes, and assessment findings, okay? So we already know there's no physician's orders, diagnostic tests, I'm telling you right Okay, now. Let, let me stop the video here. I actually did all, you know, all six questions and it took me 15 minutes per, you know, uh, per question, so. Uh, I'm making a 15-minute video, so this is going to have to be part one of six. So, to summarize, when you recognize Q questions, you want to write down what is of concern as you go along. Either write it on your board at the NCLEX or keep a mental note of it, okay? Now, the second question is analyzing cues. I will take this up in the next video.